Okay, the following will be a walkthrough um, in Photoshop relative to the actions and function key settings that we have done for this LK system. So you can start by either double clicking Photoshop on the taskbar or you can press the Photoshop launch key which is MX5 on your keyboard, which is what I just did. So to open an image, just like any other file, open. I'm going to get, grab that beetle we were shooting. I've got my uh, Zerene composite. I'm going to open up that. The very first thing I do when I open up an image in Photoshop, and this is just my own preference, I save it as a copy right away. So that this way it preserves my original comp as a digital negative. So I'm going to say File, Save As, and we'll just say, we'll keep the same file name. I'll put an underscore with Edits and save it and hit OK. <clears throat> One of the first things I would do in an image like this, now we shot this with uh, 1, 1 to 1.5 mag. So we're taking up a, a small part, like about half of our field of view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it because I don't need to deal with a lot of that background. So I'm going to take something like this and set it up and image and crop. OK. Okay, so there we have it. Um, the next thing we can do, we can start looking at some of the, um, the two things that I use the most in, in Photoshop for adjusting my exposure or lighting. <clears throat> one of them, which we won't be using on this one, is levels. <clears throat> now, if you hold down your Alt key when you're moving your sliders in, it will show you what is being overly saturated and, and basically blown out. So here on my white points, I can see there's a spot here, there's a spot there, that's, that's really dirt. Now little tiny tips of the CD are starting to pop as I move in. This is completely blown out. So I'm not going to, I mean, this is how you control it. Now, on the blacks, I know my shadows are really deep, so I don't really have anywhere to go on the black. You can tell you already got the information right here. But on the light, on the whites, I could come in a little bit. Here's my preview button. That's without any levels adjust. That's with levels adjust. I'm not going to do levels on this. Instead, <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to bring up my shadows. So this is often the case when you have Areas like this that are that are deep and recessed and they've got a shadow. So you can go to image adjustments and shadow highlights. That's way, it, it defaults to way too much. We'll put on something really small, hit the preview button. So this is without <clears throat> this is without shadow highlights, and then this is with it. It just brings it up a little tiny bit. Without it, with it. Shadow highlights is a saver in a lot of ways. Now, you can run the highlights down, too, but it starts to look pretty synthetic. So I'm going to keep my background the same. I also don't like this halo effect you get from playing with the highlights. I want that left alone. So I'm going to hit OK. So I've adjusted a little bit on that. And one of the big things people do in Photoshop is sharpening. I'm going to bring, you always want to have your uh, subject at 100% when you're doing any sharpening. So to get to 100% in Photoshop is Control alt 0 and it goes to 100%. If I go Control 0 it'll go back to fit on screen. So at 100% I'm going to grab my hand and drag around to a point. So here I've got some of these little uh, CD and, and texture on the leg which is really kind of cool. Alright. <clears throat> so I've got this knee joint, which is neat. So now, one of the ways we can sharpen, I've given you F2, F3, and F4. All three of which are a combination of Smart Sharpen and Unsharp Mask that work very, very well. Three and four are very aggressive sharpening. You wouldn't never use it on something like this. Maybe you might use uh, F3 on a LEP. And... Um, you might use F4 on a really badly damaged file that you just need to get a sharp edge to do some uh, measuring. It's way over the top, way over sharpening. But I'll show you what F2 does. Now watch the screen. F2. Okay, so it just popped a little tiny bit. 
I'm going to go back. I'll show you my history. So it's both. It's unsharp mask and smart sharpen together that, that there are that function. Now, there's another sharpening algorithm. There are two more, actually, in this, in this uh, setup. You've got <clears throat> F8 and F9. Now, this was given to us by Les Walking in Melbourne. He's incredible, very generous, and very, very smart man with anything digital. So um, F8, and I'll show you on layers, separates the layers, the background, the background copy, which is now black and white, and the color, which is separate. So if I turn off the background copy and just turn on the color, that is that is the color only in this image. If I turn on the background and turn the color off, now we have our image <clears throat> without any color on it. And this is where you want to sharpen. So now Les also gave us a sharpening algorithm, which we're going to hit in F9, which will sharpen this up and uh, allow us to and we'll put the color back on. You'll see the difference. So watch the image when I... Oh, I can't hit the F9 key while I'm recording with this particular software because it'll kill the software. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Actions and I'm going to manually uh, hit F9 right here, which is Sharpen F9. I'm going to click it and hit Play and watch it. Boom! There you go. So I'm going to go back to my layers and put my color back on. And there you go. It's amazing how much sharpening you can get away with without it being pixelated at all. It's nice and tight and super clean. Okay. <clears throat> I know everybody's into the sharpening stuff. I, I particularly from an aesthetic standpoint, I don't love it. Uh, it, it, it has its purpose. And I know for uh, working in taxonomy, you want all the details nice and crispy, but you can always go too far with that stuff. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add uh, a scale. So to add a scale, if you hit F7, it'll bring up your scales. These are measurement scales that I have made for every lens at every magnification using this particular camera. I have scales going back to the Canon 40D 10 years ago, and the 5D, and the 7D, and the 7D Mark II, and on and on and on and on. This one is the 50 megapixel camera, and the scale size is determined in large part by pixel density. So Photoshop needs to be told how many pixels are in one millimeter. Then it can calibrate. So I'm going to go down here. Uh, I shot this with my 100 millimeter lens at 1 to 1.5, so I select that. Now I'm calibrated. <clears throat> now I can drop a measurement scale in. If I hit M7, my measurement scale marker comes up. And I can set this for one millimeter, or I can set this for, let's set it for five millimeters. I want aerial font, I want 14 point, and I want it in black. And there you have it. So now I can drag that and put it wherever it needs to be. Very easy. Another function about measuring, which is really kind of fun, I can zoom in. Let me get. It's 200%. Let me get 100%. So I go to Image, Analysis, and I'm going to grab my ruler tool. Now let's say I want to know what the distance is from here to here. I can grab my ruler tool. I can drag it on over to the end. Now, up on top, I have a line up here. It says L1. It's telling me it's 2.91 millimeters. I can also go image, image analysis, record measurements. And down here, I've got a oh, length, I'm sorry, 2.9, not 1.9. 2.9. And if I want to record another measurement, let's say I want to know how high this structure is. So I go from the top. And I'm going to hold my shift key to keep my line vertical and go to the bottom and hit record measurements. That was 1.65837. Okay. So any way, like if I wanted to know this, I could actually go <clears throat> see if I can find it. Here it is. I'm going to grab my magic wand and I'm going to click Oh, I have to be on my background, sorry. 
background copy. So I am going to fool around here and get and I'm going to go record measurement. And this is giving me the area, the circularity, the height, the width. So anything that you can you can lasso with Photoshop. This works really great if you are photographing uh, wings of a fly, for instance, with transmitted light. And you can highlight a wing cell and use the venations as your border. Now you can, you can, you know, using this will give you critical information as far as wing, wing size, uh, basically area. Well, that's it for the measuring tool for now. Uh, another thing we'll show you that's kind of fun. You can put your file name in here. So I've got F5 and F6. So if you're going to send an image out to somebody and you want to flatten your image and lock it in and you want a, a unique identifying number uh, with your with your file, maybe your museum name, a specimen name and number. Right now, it's this is my file name. So I want to put my file name on the bottom. So if I hit F5, it drops the file name in there. Just like so. That's it. If I wanted it in white, I'd hit F6. And if I look at my actions, what it did is it put my file name in. That was F, okay, F5. It puts the file name in. And see where it says flatten image here? If I don't want it to flatten the image, I would just toggle that off. And it won't flatten the image. And that's it. Uh, let's see what else. That's it for the uh, the presets and the levels in photo and, and the uh, actions in Photoshop. So I'm going to save this out now. I'm going to go back to my layers, of which now there's one because by putting this text on there, I flattened the image. So I'm going to say File, and I'm just going to hit Save because I've already saved this as this particular one with edits. So I'm going to hit Save. That's it. I'll close it out. And I close out Photoshop. That's it for the Photoshop tutorial. It's pretty straightforward.